We're just beginning to recover from a huge solar storm that brought aurora around most of the world. When hot on its heels it comes some fast wind from a huge coronal hole that could bring us more storming. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity has really picked up this week, starting with a massive solar storm that pretty much evacuated the whole eastern side of the disk, but you couldn't see it from Earth. Thank God for stereo, our backside monitor. It caught it from the side. This solar storm has now hit Earth and has wreaked havoc. We've had aurora pretty much all over the world for the last 12 hours or so. And we're now going to be dealing with some fast wind from this massive coronal hole right here. It's beginning to move into the Earth strike zone, so hot on its heels, we're going to have yet a chance for more storming. So if you ever wonder why we have a backside monitor, here is why. This is the coronagraph from Stereo A. It allows us to see these big solar storms being launched and launched out towards Earth. And you can see this monster being launched right here. It takes up almost the entire side of the disk all the way out like that. We couldn't see this thing from the Earth vantage point, but here it shows it and it's on its way to Earth. And thank goodness for Stereo, otherwise we would have never seen this latest solar storm coming. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we remain well below the sea floor. We're popping a few C-class flares here and there, but not really. This is keeping it at, at about a marginal level for you amateur radio operators for solar flux, and this trend is going to continue because as we get closer to solar minimum, things get quieter and quieter. So we're kind of in the marginal area right now, and we plan to stay that way for the remainder of the week. Switching to your solar storm conditions, after that long duration storming period we had back at the beginning of the month, things began to quiet down and quiet down. Then we had that huge solar storm that launched just a few days ago, and when it hit Earth, BAM! Look at that. It turned on like a light switch. This got us up to a G2 level storm, and it looks really impressive here. But believe it or not, it, the storm moved so slowly, it didn't produce really intense aurora. And then, once the storm got past a certain point, it began to wane, and the field flipped north, and boom! It just shut off like a light switch once again. So things are now back to being quiet, and we are just waiting in the moment for that fast wind to arrive. And although the aurora wasn't the brightest show we've ever seen because the storm was so slow, we still had gorgeous views over much of the world. Take these views, for instance, in Sweden and in Norway. We had gorgeous views in Scotland and in Ireland. We had them in England and also over Iceland. Moving over to the West Hemisphere, we had it in Alberta, Canada, some stunning shows and also in Ontario. In the United States, New York got one of the most amazing shows in multiple places. And we had gorgeous aurora over Massachusetts, Wisconsin, Michigan, Montana, even Iowa got aurora, and Alaska. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see that bright region that's beginning to rotate to the east limb on the backside there. That is kind of popping off a few things here and there. That region is going to be rotating into Earth view here just in the next couple days or so, and we're seeing some activity. So we might see some Earthside activity pick up, you know, next in the next few days or so. And then also you see that huge a hole. That black hole is what gave us that in long duration storming at the beginning of the month. And that thing now is in the middle of the backside and it's still very well formed. That means that thing's going to be returning to the Earth disk and be in the stri Earth strike zone in about two weeks. So we may still get some more intense storming in about two weeks. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2599 is now rotating off of the west limb, and 2602 is now rotating onto the east limb. And this region is reasonably unstable, not so much in the way of having a lot of large class flares, but rather just launching solar storms. We're seeing a lot of mini wispy solar storms and things kind of launching from it. So we're going to be watching this region because it might bring some more storming once it enters the Earth strike zone. And then after that, we expect to see another region rotating onto the east limb here in the next couple days, and that one has already launched some bigger solar storms, so we're keeping our eyes on them.
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still anticipating the hit from that high-speed stream. NOAA is anticipating a minor storm conditions at high latitudes starting around the 16th and about a 30% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about active conditions with maybe a 15% chance, 10% chance of a minor storm, and then things should be able to calm down after that and remain calm uh, all the way in through the beginning of next week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, pretty much everything remains in the green. We do have some active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, but they just aren't flare producers. The big issue that we have right now is the solar flux. It's marginal levels right now, so you amateur radio operators are probably having a little bit of issues with uh, propagation, but it's still staying most of the time in the green, and it should remain like that throughout the week. So this week has already been pretty exciting. We've just beginning to recover from a huge solar storm, and as things quiet down, we now anticipate some fast wind that should hit us here in the next day or so, and that will should give us more storming and possibly some more aurora. So you aurora photographers, keep, don't take too much of a breather yet. You're not, a, you're not free yet. And you amateur radio operators, kind of hang in there for the next day or two while we get through this solar storm, and then things should begin to quiet back down again until those new regions rotate more into Earth view, and we'll see if they have any solar storming that they're going to send us. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.